Greetings, words of power family. You know, we're sitting here with some of my brethren and sisters who just got to Ghana. Well, guess what? They all been to Ghana a million times. That's no big deal. But anyway, we're going ahead. I want to talk to the youth tonight and to the brothers and sisters. And we just really want to just have a conversation and uh, just reason, because that's what we do, Rastafari. Right? You know, on my wall, on my wall, there's a picture of Rastafari in my home. As we give thanks and praise unto God all the time for giving us the power and the strength just to see another day. Because it's He who has made, it is not us who have made ourselves, but the Almighty who has made us. And we give thanks and praise once again. Israel. So vegan word, so needs power, let me tell you, say a word. So needs power, let me tell you, say a word. Make a move and don't say a word. Have you heard? So we're going to go into some reason. I was just talking to the youth. You know, for me, always, I'm always about the youth as a queen mother. I'm about the women, of course, but I'm also about the youth. For me, the youth are everything. They're the future. And without them, where will we go? You know, I know where we've been, but where will we go? So I want to introduce some uh, youth that I've known of oh mine for a mighty long time. And now they've grown into women and men. And I, am I old yet? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Black don't cry. Let's go in there yet. <laughs> All right, introduce yourself, my sister. Tell people your name. Okay, so my name is Anoto Pamwadie, and I'm 21 years old. 21. I am Afia Pamwadie, and I'm 23. And I'm Kofi Okonwadi, and I'm 19. <laughs> Let me get my water on this one. Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> so we're going to talk to the youth tonight, because we always, we love them. Yeah. Mm. We always like to bless them up in our words, out and our power. Yeah, because we, without them, who are we? Mm. So I just want to say to the youth, I want y'all to really stay focused. I always say that to the youth, because I feel like the youth are all over the place more times. And as you, you have to have your uh, focus. You have to have a goal. You have to know where you want to go in life. Yeah. And uh, no one has the right to tell you which way to go. It's, your, it's a free hard try. But you know, the Bible says the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. Mm -hmm. And honor your mother and your father all your days shall be what? Long. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to disrespect you, okay? Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> So my thing is this, you know, Africa, Africa has some of the youngest population on earth. We know that because we've done our studies. 80% uh, of the youth, of, of the population in Africa is under 20. So that means y'all fit right into this. So, and in America, it's the opposite. 80% of us are over 60, and I'm included in that. So we're looking to y'all to, to take us to the, I guess like my grandma would say, pass the baton. You know, we're running the race, the race is the race of life. And we have to pass the baton because mama's getting tired. You feel me? And uh, I'd like to know when I pass the baton, this is someone who's going to take us beyond where I've taken us so far. So y'all have a, y'all have a long road to go and a big task. Are y'all ready? Yes. Yes? Yes. Uh -huh. Are you serious? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right. And the reason I say that because Africa has needs so much. You know, we're not just saying the world doesn't need it much. We said Africa. And for me, I'm focusing on Africa because we're African people. I'm focusing on us because we're coming out of the West and we're putting our focus on the motherland. It's important. She's been ignored. She's been misused. She's been abused. And it's time for people like you and you and you to take control. You know, and, and that being, we say, step right up and take your seats. Yes. The righteous, not the wicked. Mm -hmm. Step right up and take your seats. Mm -hmm. So you have to, when you're ready to take that, you have to be prepared to, to be able to take us to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, for me as a parent, as a mother, and a grandmother, I want y'all to do the best you can do. Mm -hmm. I want you to be better than we could ever be. As much as she said, we have to push ourselves. Beyond what we could ever see ourselves doing. Mm -hmm. Because we, we will never, you know, for me, I never knew how much I could do until I pushed myself to that outer limit. Mm -hmm. And now I realize there's no limit to me. Mm -hmm. I can do it all. I can do all things through Charlie's strength. Mm -hmm. 
So that's first and foremost. Yeah. So for all the little daughters of Zion, let me ask you a question. Ooh, do you still see yourself living in, in Ghana or in Africa? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have a, I, across the board, yeah. young people. Yeah. You know what? The answer is to salute you, not just me. Because that's, you know, America is full of creature comforts. Let's be honest. Here the lights go off. Here we may not have water. We have to bathe out of a bucket. And these lights can go out any second. That's Africa. Mm -hmm. And the road may not be paved so well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there ain't no Cheerios. <laughs> and we can go on and on. But it's the best place on earth to be. Mm -hmm. And I say that because nobody is following me. That's nobody right. is disrespecting me. As a woman, I see the women walk outside my house at 12 o'clock at night by themselves, which I would never do mm -hmm. in the States. My son is my bodyguard. I don't leave home without him. They know me. Anytime you see me, you see my twin. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So I'm saying, in Africa, you can walk out here at 1230 at night, you and your sister, and no one dare, dare not touch y'all. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm not the minority. Here I'm the majority. Here I run things, things don't run me. Here when I look around, everything looks like me. The banker, the mailman, the doctor, the lawyer, the pilot, the engineer. They all look like me. So people say, well, it doesn't matter. It does matter. That white Jesus picture on the wall, it's a difference. It makes a difference because it shows right supremacy. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't, we love all races, but image is, our images, that's why the Muslims say we have no graven images. It's important because images evoke thought mm -hmm. and a mindset. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we have positive images. That's why we say in my house, there's a picture of Rastafari. But when you walk in, I want you to see what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. As you come through the door, if it's too much, you, you can take your leave. Right. <laughs> Is that a nice way to put it? Yeah. You may take your leave. That's what the queen would say. So, I'm going to ask the brother. You're coming here with your youngest and your oldest sister. And uh, what do you see yourself doing? I think I see myself trying to really just um, continue all the things that are already started, especially like dealing with Africa, there's a wealth of great ideas. Um, mm. There just needs to be people willing to, to, to put in the effort to get everything all the way, all the way through. Okay. So what do you do? What do you do? What do you like to do? Well, I go to school for audio arts. Okay, Marcus. Audio <laughs> arts. Uh-huh. Right. And how are you doing in school? I'm doing well. Because our mind is a terrible thing to waste. That's mm right. -hmm. So you're doing well. You're, pri you're giving it your 100. You're giving it your all. I'm a straight A student. Mm -hmm. I'm a valedictorian five times. Oh, wow. So school for me is life. Oh, yeah. I love school more than anything. <laughs> My husband used to say, why don't you get out of school to get a real job? But school is a school. So learning is something that I don't, I don't never want to stop learning to. I'm not here anymore. Mm -hmm. Every day is a learn. I teach myself something new every day. Mm -hmm. So as a youth, you make sure you always learn and don't tell nobody, oh, how many degrees you got? Because one of my girlfriends said, girl, how many more tabs you got to go back to school? Why is it bothering me? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> These night hours that I'm doing and burning the night out and that oil is because I want edification. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it for betterment. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So education, my son, never stop learning. Mm -hmm. It's a continuous thing. And you teach your children the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a continuous cycle. And the only day we stop learning is the day we stop breathing. Mm -hmm. Because we weren't supposed to breathe. Mm -hmm. Remember that. 
See, I was an educational counselor for years at University of Phoenix, and I was the number one in America. Why? Because I told my students, remember we weren't supposed to read, y'all. And that's how I got them to sign up every day. <laughs> we weren't supposed to read. We weren't supposed to read. And now we have the opportunity to read. Don't take that opportunity lightly. People have died for this opportunity for us to take. So take your education very seriously, including my son over there, Marcus Mosiah Gabby. <laughs> education is the key to betterment. Yes? Mm -hmm. So we see that the brother said he has an ambition. What do you see yourself in Africa doing? Yeah, so um, I got my undergrad degree in Summer Arts and Sciences and focus in post-production. Okay. So I definitely want to um, help the um, film and TV industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you're going to be behind the scenes. You're going to have to speak up if you're going to be in front of the camera. You've got to speak up a little bit. Get a little bass in your voice so they don't take you, take you seriously. Okay? <laughs> mm. I know. Very nice. Very nice. Now, what would you like to do, my queen? Yes, yeah, so I'm currently getting my undergrad in music performance with a focus in violin. So I'm already, you know, in communication with the National Conservatory of Ghana to try to, like, talk about doing music classes, performances, etc. Um, within Ghana and even you know in other countries as well. This Africa, it's fifty-four yeah. nations, pick one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be Ghana, guys. You're yeah. like, oh, you selling Ghana? I'm not selling Ghana. I'm selling Africa. Yeah. Right. I'm not really selling Ghana. I just happen to be in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm not selling Ghana, guys. I'm selling Africa, a right. Kebbi land. Right. You know, the mother of civilization. That's right. I'm not selling one. You can pick any one of them. That's why. My desk is always with that mark of Africa, so I can remind myself why I am here. Okay, so that's very nice. Now let's talk to Big Papa who's sitting over here. <laughs> I've been knowing them since they was all shorties, and now they all grown. But guess what? As I said earlier, black don't cry. Yes, all right. All right. So how you doing, my brother? I give thanks. I see you got your tribe, tribe yes. of oh, Judah God. here. Yes. Tribe of Judah. Yes. And they all still smiling. Yeah. <laughs> they all still smiling. <laughs> and they all, you did a great job so far. Did you, so you get an A? <laughs> you I'll get an A. I've been working hard. I know you've been working hard on it. He gets an A plus. Because the set while still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so that, hey, y'all, it ain't easy. I've been doing that for a long time, y'all. I wanted to say that this is a beautiful family. This is an example of what the black family should look like and, you know, live in love and harmony. Because guess what? If you run down the world, you're not going to catch it. That's family right. is where it's at. True. That's where it's at. Okay. So this is one of my brothers, uh, you, my YouTube family. I've been knowing him for a while. I've actually seen him. He didn't have a break when I first knew him. That's true. See, so we've been doing this thing for a while. Let me just say this. You see how we nice in a Rastafari? Sure. Or nice how we just, hey, we don't get old, uh, we just get nice. Sure. Unless they like fine wine. Yes. <laughs> so, Brenton, you been, I know you brought your family. You were originally from Ghana, is that yeah, not correct? That and where are you originally from in Ghana? So, I was born in Tema, which is about um, 20 miles away from. Oh, God, I know where Tema is. We don't know where Tema is. Everybody but Tema don't like our crowd. Like, I don't like the Tema. I'm like, what's wrong with me? You're only 30 minutes away. Now, man, I've got too busy. <laughs> like, you're only 30 minutes away. Now, man, I've got too busy. But anyway, we, I have these Timber people here right. in our crowd. So, I'm doing big. Right. So, you're from Timber. Yes. Your family's from Timber. That's where, well, that's where we were born. But, you know, like, um, in terms of um, cultural, um, generational um, hometown, you know, my, um, my father's side is from the Ashanti region. Okay. You know, Kumasi area. My mother's side is from the Kuyapian Mountains, which is also not too far from here. You okay. Know, we go up the mountains, um, you know, Aburi, and then go down a little I bit. know exactly that. <laughs> I love Aburi. That's where all the Rastas live. Aburi is where all the Rastas live. You want to know where Rasta they go up in the mountain there. You see, Jamaica. Uh, well, I have a video for that. I got a video called Jamaica Village. Check me out. You know sure. how to So, Aburi, yeah, up in yeah. the areas. Yeah, Tutu area, yeah. That's so you're, so you're a mountain man. Both, you know. I, yeah, I, I trust flat land. 
<laughs> so I know you for I know I've known you for over twenty years. So yeah. when did you leave God? Like when you were like what twenty or something yeah, well, around? Yeah, I was like twenty seven. You know when when um, I just had finished school and um, the whole plan those days was to just come to the United States for a little bit and come back. <laughs> <laughs> So we were both students at the University of Ghana, uh -huh. which is not too far from here. Oh yes, I know where it is. Yeah, so uh -huh. um, that's where we initially met. She came um, for an, a study abroad program. I was a student there at that time, and um, you know, through I talk food and all that. Kind uh -huh. of stuff, yeah. And that beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> you go on time. <laughs> <laughs> you see that smile? <laughs> they all got it. <laughs> Watch them, they all got that smile, that smile, daddy, you saw it. I saw it when I first saw her. I remember when I first met y'all, I think I think I met y'all at Malcolm X College. Yeah, I was, I graduated, I'm a graduate of Malcolm X College. Congratulations. And 2000 and something. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Mm, valedictorian, of course. <laughs> booyaka, booyaka, booyaka. One out of 1,005. Wow. Uh -huh. Wow. I remember the day. <laughs> uh, we're going to wrap with it. Don't say you can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes. So you met her, your wife, while you were on, well, she was on an exchange program. Right, right, and then you saw her, and then, I mean, pretty much it's history. Right. Basically, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then how did you end up in America? Well, so after school, um, you know, she invited me over. Of course she did. <laughs> <laughs> Of course she did. And why would she have? Right, I would have so. invited you too. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I told you. You live it to your name, ain't you? My my mom. Mom. My mom. You go, girl. <laughs> okay. So she invited yeah. you over. Yeah, and the whole idea was, you know, just come for a little bit. And she was actually insisting not to stay in the United States. Like, See, you know, I knew she was. Yeah. yeah. I know she yeah, was. So. To, to just come back, you know, as soon as possible, and um, you know, we're still working on it, but we're we getting closer. We're getting closer. We're getting closer to that. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. You have a mission. Absolutely. You know, have right. yeah. right. It's a mission. Right. It's a mission. Every True. mission starts with a mission. True. True. Yeah. True. So yeah. obviously, everything worked out for you well in the state, and. Yeah. Um, you are, what are you doing in the States now, man? I know you, you have your degrees and stuff. What are you doing over there now? Well, I, 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 I teach in the university. Um, so, um, Which university do you teach at? Amherst University. Uh-huh, good for you. Um, what do you teach? I teach um, education courses. So I mm -hmm. kind of prepare um, students who are getting ready to go out and become teachers. Oh, wow. So, um, teach those young so, people. That's really an, um, that's a very, very important job. As a teacher, it's very hard when you try to go out there that first time and get up in front of kids, like, wait a minute. You know? right. It's a lot. Right. You know, you have to be prepared. So it's good that you're doing that. Thank you. Yeah, bridge over trouble water. True. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my family, we're going to talk to the queen of the family, mm -hmm. Asantawa. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all know Asantawa. Come on, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See her in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> in the, re the reincarnation. She lived definitely named the right name. She mm -hmm. lives to the power of the name. Always been a super soul sister. Always on the mission in Chicago. Always about the children. Always about the community. And always about the liberation of Africa. You can't ask for more. Mm -hmm. One of my good sisters is Dr. Uh, I just want you to say what brought you to Ghana this time. Uh, I think this time was for the children. We, we, um, we had we brought them when they were much younger, and we weren't sure that the memory was uh, firm. I like and, that. Yeah. So we I wanted them that. to recognize themselves as part of the people, and um, to you know see the the possibility that is here, and take their eyes really off of you know uh, the need to have a white man's job. 
you know, um, that's something that we've talked about since they were children, you know, like, you don't have to get stuck in this bill paying system, you know, and then next thing you got a mortgage, you got this, and then you feel tired. Oh, you are tired. Right. Look loud and sink them. Right. They know what they doing. It's a trap, y'all. Right. But go ahead. So we just wanted them to see that Africa is, um, awaits its creators, as his majesty said. Yeah. Um, awaits its liberators, and they need to be part of this. Yeah, so I really appreciate the talk you gave them. They need to hear people say that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, they so, so, so I remember these sisters, come on, <laughs> running in my basement. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, what are they doing down there? Don't worry, they tear it up. It's okay. They have a good time. They get some food, get them some more. <laughs> so I remember. So, so, so after a while, I just really want to say, you've been doing a lot for our community for such a long time. You speak at a lot of our events, and you're always so gracious when people ask you to speak of His Majesty or Queen Omega or anything that we need as far as to edify our women. I would like you just to give like maybe one or two points on uh, Queen Amiga, because I know you've done an extensive study on that. I've watched you in several arenas, and I know you're more than qualified to tell us a little bit that maybe something we may didn't know. Hmm. Well, one of the things that um, I take with me always and have with me is that Empress Menon insisted on a certain level of excellence for black women. Mm. And then she looked around the continent of Africa and began in the country of Ethiopia raising the level of excellence. So it is almost as though, and it's really not almost as though, um, because when um, Empress Zawadi II was Empress, um, Empress Menon went to her, she was not yet Empress, um, she was still a princess only, and she said, you know, I have this massive vision for women um, of bringing women up to the level of a Title IV education, and that is the mm -hmm. highest level of education that you can have in a university. Title IV schools communicate with each other all over the world, so it's like uh, going to London, and you, you know, you're not worried about if you come from, say, um, a Harvard in, in, um, in the United States. When you go to London, your degree will be recognized. She like wanted that. that kind of excellence for women. Now, there was that for men. But not for women. But not for women. And she was like, what's up? You know, and um, Amber Swatitu told her, listen, I've already made an education mandatory for all children. So everybody's going to learn how to read. Everybody's going to have basic church education. What else do you want? She couldn't see it. Right? Wow. But Amber Swatitu insisted. And that's her first act upon making the throne was making that possible. So she gave women the, the that, opportunity. That opportunity. And then, like, she was very concerned. Everything that concerns a woman's well-being, even to the fact that she noticed that women were so consumed with washing, hand-washing clothes, she was the first one to bring a laundromat into uh, Ethiopia for the purpose of freeing women up so that they could contribute um, more extensively to the well-being of the society. You need to do something besides spend the whole day washing clothes. Right? She brought in, of course, maternity hospitals, but child care. That just the recognition that if you are always addressing the needs of this child, I can't necessarily depend upon you to make an impact in your young years um, in this society, but I want to give you some time to do that. Let me set up child care facilities. I like that. I, I mean, I just love, she just wanted excellence. And I just would hope that sisters and brothers and people in general um, come back to this vision um, that we should never have lost. That level that was set in the 1930s uh, just needs to continue. Excellence for black women. The thing about, um, you know, surrounding black women with this level of excellence, um, and we hear the people in the Nation of Islam say this, you know, yeah. educate a woman, you're going gonna, you're gonna to bring up the whole, whole nation. nation. She's not, real women aren't in the business of really uh, being selfish with time or resources because they're not happy, the children are not happy, they're not happy and the husband's not happy and in-laws and they're, they're going to bring everybody up. So it, it really is a first step towards progress, towards uh, betterment of a people is bring up the quality of life around women. She really saw that. I, and I'm about that um, on this planet. You know, know. So let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm about the women. Right. I'm about the children. Yeah. Well, let's 
fall in line. Just guess what? That's all we need to do. I love how the sister is. She's always on that mission. And I'm about that. You know, living in Jamaica, that was one of the problems I saw with the sisters in Jamaica. They spent too much time doing housework. Even the diabetes sisters, too much time. Three hours washing clothes. Two hours fetching water. Three hours cooking food. No time for nation building. No time for the liberation of Africa. No time to even read a book. Right, right. So we need to get our women from being just house help. Mm -hmm. We are more than just house help. Mm -hmm. We are. It would break my heart to see Africa go forward using the model that Europe has used, where they will assemble, like in their Congress or in their Senate, 102 males and really believe they're representing the whole of the country. Um, and pass laws and stamp it and make it a constitution and you haven't heard from more than half the population. Um, because women comprise in any country all around the world, more than half the population. Um, we need sisters at the table on every level. And we have to assist them in getting to the table. I like that. Did you hear that, brothers? Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Meaning that we cannot have a conversation about nation building if the sisters are not present. Because guess what? What John may be talking in your one ear, but he might be talking in both of our ears. You know what I'm saying? So you have to give the sisters a chance. You have to sit them at the table, not just serving the table, but at the table. I don't mind serving. I'm a servant. I was born to serve, but I also have a mind, mm -hmm. and I have ideas, and I have whizzy, sure. and I've seen a lot, mm -hmm. and I definitely know the needs of my people. Mm -hmm. I don't need any other race to tell me the needs of my people. I know the needs of my people. Mm -hmm. So one thing I like about what she's saying about queens, queens put others first. Queens make sure that our women are educated, not just our men. Queens make sure that they're gracious. So we're always, I always found my sister to be gracious. Not me sometimes. <laughs> you know, we're growing. But again, you know, it's about that light. So you said one of the powerful things that I love is that the sisters need to be at the table. And then you said that the, as a queen, our queen mother, the original queen mother, was about education. Mm -hmm. And education was not just for one set of people, but for all set of people. Mm -hmm. And I think we're still having that problem to this day in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because some of the girls don't go to school here. You know, some of the girls don't get to go to school here. They're too busy cleaning, selling donuts, or whatever those things is that they sell out on the road, mm -hmm. and all this other nonsense. Get our girls back in school. Give our girls education. Give our girls a chance to see what the world offers. And I bet you, it'll be a better world. Mm -hmm. Just give them a fair share, mm -hmm. you know? Men have ran it for so long, mm -hmm. and you see where we are. I'm sorry, brother, I love y'all. Mm -hmm. But y'all had a, the world is here, and there's wars and rumors of wars. So tell me one more thing that you would like to share with the audience that Queen Omega has taught you that we may not have known. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things that um, she saw, and I heard you mention this earlier, is that, um, you know, when we are out of our prime, let's say we're past 20, 25, 30, 35, now we're 50 or 60, we are not um, non-contributors to the society. In fact, those may be the years of our greatest contribution. And so one of the things she instituted, we talk about her school for girls, but um, we don't uh, hardly talk about her adult education program. She insisted that the older women go back to school. She says, you all are now states women. You all know what it takes to run a family. You know the rich, you know, you know what we're up, you've seen it all. Come on, you need to, your voice is needed. I need you all in the parliament. Right? I need you all running uh, the major businesses in this nation. You're going to keep it on the right tracks because you know, you know exactly what it takes for a family to survive. 
And she instituted that, and the first year that she opened that with her daughter, she struggled to get attendance because, you know, the older women were like, oh, well, I'm going well, well, back to school. Like school. Right. By the time she transitioned, that school had a waiting list. Um, so that's yes, great. Women began to realize that, oh, yeah, I, I, I belong. That's you right. You know, I'm not, um, you know, out on the margins of this. I'm exactly in the center. Yeah, and um, sometimes we see this kind of championed with uh, men, and I'm not trying to set up a, a man versus women, but we see like really old men. Um, if you look at the U.S. Uh, Congress, you know, this oh, they say they till they die. You know, they're considered wise. <laughs> well, we're just trying to give women the same shit. You know, like right. but your wisdom is it's necessary. necessary. A woman who's been through it is a woman we can count on, is a woman we know she ain't gonna play. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go to school until I was 30. Well, let me just take that back. My mom went to school when I was 17. I graduated high school. No, 16. I went to college at 16. I didn't do very well because I was forced to go to school and I didn't want to go. So I didn't do very well. So later on in life, after I grew up and I grew up, I went to school. I started my education again when I was 37. Um, 37. And then I went straight through. I got my associates and I got my bachelor's and I got my master's and then I got my nursing degree and then I got my, my construction degree. So I just, I just, once the door was open, I just kept going. So I understand uh, later on in life. But the reason I changed, because I started having them and I said, realized I had to be a better example. And I couldn't ask them to do something that I hadn't done myself. Right. You know, so many parents, parents be fake sometimes, kids. They be really awesome. Okie dokie. <laughs> ask you to do, they ain't gonna do for themselves. Ask you to do stuff they can't, they ain't do for themselves. I'm not that parent. I never tell my youth to do stuff that I haven't done myself. So they can't tell me it can't be done. That's right. See, that's how I get them. Don't tell me it can't be done. Because I did it. Right. So I would never ask y'all to do stuff that I'm not willing to put my ass on the line for first. Okay? So you won't be able to come back later and say, hey, mama. No, not that mama. I'm not that guy. Okay? I'm the kind of mama be like, no, baby. Let me pull out my mirage of degrees. You want to come match me or you want to pull out your GPAs? Come on. Okay. So it is a good thing to know that Queen Omega strive for us for education, not just for our young women, but she also strive for education for older women like myself. And her, it was like, it was, her pet peeve, really, education, just like His Majesty, because His Majesty said the same thing. He wanted us to be educated. Yes. And that was one of the reasons why I went back to school, because I read all the biography of His Majesty, and it said, wait a minute, education is the key to betterment in life. Right. So I wanted some betterment in life, <laughs> so I went back to school. And guess what? It worked for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we want to teach the children is, once we get these degrees, once we get this education, once our queens get what Queen Omega wanted us to get out of life, it is imperative that we come back and we do our part for Mama Africa. That's right. It's imperative that we throw our hat into the ring as women. It's imperative that we reach back and grab a sister who wasn't able to maybe make it to where we are and catapult her forward. It's That's important. Right. That's right. It's a mission. Yes. So, now that we've been blessed, now that we earn the right to sit at the table, as the queen told us, because we deserve to be sitting at the table, now that we're here, we have to be making valid, valuable contributions to our nation. Other than that, um, why would we be at the table? No need to have us. We might as well serve some tea. Because <laughs> we're servants. We don't mind service. And you know, as I tell my brothers and sisters, young queens, serve your mothers and fathers, and sons, serve your father so that you may be served in life. Because a lot of people want to be served, but they never were servers. They never did the service. You have a lot of people want to be served. I want to be served. Serve me, serve me. But if you've never been a servant first, you know, you haven't earned the right to be served. Like that. That's what I tell my son all the time. He'd be like, ah, ready to bark. But remember for the 25 years that I carried you and I cooked for you every day, and I did for you and took you to baseball and this and that and all of that. That was years of my life that I will never get back. Mm -hmm. I've served you already. Mm -hmm. 
So you shouldn't be growling at me like ah, when I ask for a cup of tea. That's right. You should be jumping over happy to serve me because I served you first. Yeah. And I served you in love and light. And with a smile on my face. Oh, I was just too happy to serve. So give me some of that back. It's called time for you to pay it forward. Sorry. I'm so happy to have this conversation with my family. I just want to close out with the, with the youth because they're our future. And I want you to say, you have your friends back in America. I know y'all do. I want you to say, look into that camera and say something to one of them who are listening. What is your thought? Now that you've come to Africa, you're not a child anymore. You're an adult with adult thoughts and adult visions and an adult third eye. Tell your friends out there to that camera one thing you need that you learned that you were since you come to Africa as an adult, and one thing that you think you once you return back to the states that you need to do to get your ball to rolling in Africa. Mm -hmm. I think first and foremost, in like since I have been here um, in Ghana, it's been about a week now. I would say. Just come, like it's such a welcoming, warm experience, especially if you are of African descent, if you are black, you need to experience the atmosphere, the people, etc. Uh, one thing to do upon returning is to continue networking, continue getting the ball rolling in terms of fundraising, etc., to come back here even stronger and continue my dreams. Of music. Oh my, can we give her a clap, y'all? You know, I'm a teacher. We clap our students. Okay, especially clap our girls. We love the boys. We say girls, real boys, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teacher. Next, what would you say, princess? Yeah, yeah, definitely um, agree with her in saying that. Um, definitely come for the environment. Come from the come for the easiness in life. Like. One thing I really love about being here is I can walk outside and get something to eat. I don't have to think about driving or anything. Or just being easy, being calm, not worrying about, oh, I don't want to go inside the store because they might think I'm stealing something, something like that. Mm -hmm. And definitely to get the ball rolling, definitely networking here so that when I go back, I can set up there and bring it back here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right, you know how we do, y'all. Mm -hmm. We love our people. Um, I think I would say that people should just come, even if you have no other reason to come, just for the imagery of, of being here. And there's, there's power in seeing yourself everywhere. And mm. if, if you don't have any other reason, you should just come for that. And um, I would say, like, going back to the States that a lot of the um, barriers that, that were in place can now be broken because we can communicate with people across the continent at any time. So I think I definitely utilize that and use that to our advantage, you know, in this era. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. And so what he's saying is he's no longer thinking in the box. I want our children to be children or our young people to be without borders, you know, because yes. the world is moving without borders. So I want our youth to see the world without borders. We're not limited. We don't have to be here, there, nowhere. The whole world is ours. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. God is founded upon the seas and established it among the floods. Who shall ascend into the holy hills of Jah? I and I who have a clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up our souls under the vanity. Yes, so no soul deceitfully. Yes. So these are the future. This is the future. We are the future. Right. Africa awaits its creators. We are already here. Family, we want you to join us. You know, we're not selling Africa. We're not selling Ghana. We're just selling a peace of mind, a mindset. That's what I'm selling, a mindset. Meaning that the, the whole world belongs to me. Stop limiting me. And I'm not allowing anyone from this point on, after the pandemic, to limit my thoughts. That's right. You know? It, one thing about that, it gave me a mindset and a reset. Mm -hmm. And now, all of my people have tasted a little bit of freedom. 
And now that we've tasted a little bit of freedom, where should we go next? True. That's the question. I love you, my family. Peace out, words out in my heart. And again, we always say to you, Africa is your home. You know, you may not have been born in Africa, but Africa was definitely born in you. Mommy and Kuma, we love you. True. Rest in power. Peace out. <laughs> So put it in your meditation.